gracious Heavenly Father, I just come into your presence again by means of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only means that we have. So grateful, so very thankful for the opportunity that we have to just feast upon your word. I ask that again you would just filter out all the error but seal to our hearts that which is truth. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying together in the Epistle of Jude, uh, verse by verse, and we are reaching the end of our study here in Jude. I'm having to do this video here today on the run because of all the, the water that we've, we've had. Uh, the rain's just been nonstop, and it's been so consistent that it's... Uh, it's caused a few problems around here that uh, need fixing. But I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this study, that uh, studying along with us in this uh, short little power-packed epistle. We, uh, I believe in our last study, we'd reached verse 24, uh, the benediction. So we're closing out our study in this epistle, this wonderful epistle. So we begin verse 24, and, and it's, it's almost with some sadness that we leave this little epistle. It's been a great study. There's, there's uh, lots of things in this epistle that, that tend to tangle people up. I've tried to deal with them as honestly as I know how. And to him that is able to keep you from falling. Now, the authorized version says the word falling there is stumbling. And you may have heard that, you know, in a, in a benediction in your church. It only makes sense that we would be reading this since there were ungodly men who crept in unaware and they've been teaching ungodly things. They're not reliable and you can be led astray. And in our last few videos, our last few studies, as we looked at those verses 22 and uh, 23, we saw that we have a responsibility to deliver, snatch out of the fire, deliver them out of that false teaching. Not off the wall conspiracy theories, but that which pertains to doctrine. And the only way that that can be done is through this book, through the Word. Christian fellowship is centered in and, and around the truth of God's Word, not cleverly devised fables, not endless conspiracy theories, which only lead to more ungodliness. So here we've been concerned with the context of doctrinal error. I pointed out that the word save, sozo in the Greek there, does not mean born again or redeemed. We're not trying to save these un ungodly men that God has ordained to condemnation. It is important that we look at the context. It always is. Don't make that mistake that the word save there uh, means that you know we need to get these people born again. The word save there does not mean born again or redeemed. Deliver those with fear, pulling them out of, the word is ek in the Greek, out of the fire, and that's not the fire of hell. The context here in this, these cl closing few verses, the last four, I believe, particularly, the context is believers in Christ. And I, and I pointed out I reference the judgment seat of Christ, but if any man's work shall shall be burned up, he shall be, suffer loss. He'll, he'll suffer loss, but he will be saved, that is delivered, so as by fire. And we don't want that for others, folks. We don't want that for ourselves. We don't want that for others. If a man is overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual should restore them in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tested, for you can be also led astray as well. 
led astray into law and the flesh, away from the, the perfect finished work of Christ, away from that which builds on Christ. The judgment seat of Christ is all about how we built on Christ. That's what it's about. As opposed to law and the flesh, which we can also be led into if we're not careful, careful ourselves. That is what I believe the text is saying. So how do we deliver some with fear, pulling them out of the fire? How do we do that? Hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. How do we do that? Well, it's obvious that we do that through God's Word. I believe it is by Him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Okay? God declares that His Word will accomplish that. It's not our job to argue people into believing God's Word. No, to... to Put them under law to get them under grace. The power is not in you. The way that you keep from stumbling is the Word of God. The way that you save others or deliver others, snatch them out of the fire from stumbling is the Word of God. It, it's, up to God it's up to Him. It's up to God who is able to guard you. And the word there means guard. It's the stronger word for, for keep, tereo in the Greek. Guard, which is used of, of police guarding a prisoner or military guarding a war prisoner, you know, rather than just you, you guarding uh, some keepsake or something. So this is a strong word. It's God who is able to guard you from stumbling. Now, it doesn't mean that you may not stumble. I mean, it'd be, it'd be wonderful to say that no Christian will ever stumble. But you can't do that. You can't do that with the text. It is possible to stumble. A brother can be overtaken in a fault. And our responsibility is to stick close to the Word of God. I'm not in any way suggesting that Christ did not do enough, that He didn't do a perfect job. That's why we saw in Colossians 1, if you study through, us, through Colossians, the blood of His cross to present you wholly unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. And, and everybody always quotes the next verse, if you continue in the faith. Grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. But they're not understanding the words. Has now reconciled through the blood of His cross. Are you now reconciled? If so, you will continue in the faith. Well, what if, Steve, what if you don't continue in the faith? Well, then you were never reconciled. What did he do with the blood of his cross? He reconciled you to God and presented you wholly unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. When did he do that? When he died. So you can't take the conditional clause in the next verse, which is in fact a first-class condition in the Greek, as anything but since you are wholly unblameable and unreprovable in His sight, you will continue in the faith. You Greek students out there know what I'm talking about. We have an if followed by an indicative, a verb in the indicative mood. Since. You have every right to translate it since. Not continuing in the faith is not stumbling or being overtaken in a fault. You know, that's the problem, folks, that really hurts me. It hurts me when people say, boy, you know, you're going to pay for that sin, this or that thing that you did. And that simply reduces what Christ did. If you're going to stand in judgment for what you did, then it's not true when it says there's no judgment for those of you who are in Christ. That there's going to be some kind of, of you know, Christian purgatory. You know, there, there are going to be some Christians who go through the tribulation period and others who are going to be raptured out of it. So, you know, Christ didn't really do enough. And what really hurts me is that I know it hurts my Savior. What it says to me is that Jesus Christ did not reconcile me to God. He didn't present me wholly unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. He didn't really do that. You know, He only did a partial job. If, if, I, if I complete my end of the bargain, then, he'll, then I'll be presented wholly unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. So I've reduced the glory, glory 
of my God. And I've enhanced the sovereignty of man. And I can't do that. Folks, I can't do that. God can guard you from stumbling. It is not in man to direct his steps. We've got the whole Old Testament proving that it is not. As modern Christianity insists, in man to direct his steps. God has made all things for Himself, even the wicked for the day of judgment. And if that bothers you, take it up with God. Okay? This is what the, the book says. I can't avoid those verses. The God I know is the sovereign monarch of eternity. That God is the one working in you to will and to do His good pleasure. And it's that sovereign God that directs our attention to His Word. I am glad, I'm thrilled, in fact, that He can guard me from stumbling. And I'm also thrilled that if I do stumble, I'm His child. Astounding to me what I hear ministers say today about all this. God is my Father. He loves me with an everlasting love. He's never ceased to love me. He's done all things that's necessary for me. He doesn't allow anything to touch my life except it be for my ultimate good. And He, he tells me I'm complete in Christ. And anybody that detracts from that completeness, my heart aches. Because suddenly, my Savior's not done enough. But it, it doesn't just ache in, in that one sense. It aches in another sense as well. It aches for them. How could you not have compassion on and feel a, a need to minister to those who don't even realize that they've been made complete in Christ? In a very real sense, that's what this whole entire ministry has always been about. If we don't have that burden for these, for these folks. You know, I, I hear all the time people talking about a burden for the lost. What about a burden for His own people that are hurting, despondent, afraid, confused? In the presence of is one word in the Greek, meaning before the face of. That's what the word means. Properly, the word means down in the eye. That is, in someone's direct, concentrated gaze. That's how He's going to present you faultless. Before the presence of His glory, with exceeding joy. Well, there are those who say He could present you faultless, but that depends on you. Folks, remember what we learned in Colossians. When were you reconciled to God in the body of His flesh through death to present us wholly unblameable and unreprovable in His sight? Now, He either did that or He didn't. You will give an account on how you built on Christ. We will all give an account on how we built on Christ. Not on hay, wood, and stubble. Not ourselves. And what we did. What we did in our own energy, in our own strength, according to our own will, and, and our own timing. It's just, you, God is distant. We see ourselves as this engine, this powerful engine. You know, He's, he's made us that way. We, we really we acknowledge Him, but we really don't need Him. We're going to go our own way and we're going to do things the way that we feel, things, however we feel it's right. And, and hope, just hoping that if we do enough, you know, we'll pass the test. Christ is our life, folks. Our life. He's our life, our message, our ministry. What doctrine did you teach? Did you spend your life teaching things for which you'll get no reward? And I said, I, I told you folks, I don't want to do that. I plead with you people and, and have for the last three years I've been here. Don't believe me. Believe this book. What you hear from me is what I think this, this stuff says. I, it's what I think these verses say. 
What is important is what they really say. This is God's Word. I can't make them say what hundreds of people have told me, you know, that we're wholly unblameable and unreprovable in His sight if we continue, you know, in the faith. You know, it's up to you. It's your responsibility. You know, imagine spending your life, of course, this, this, this doesn't apply to the believer, but imagine a person spending their life thinking that they're serving the Lord just to have Him say, I never knew you. That's the God who is going to guard you and present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. It astounds me the number of Christians who believe that people are going to go through some kind of, you know, Christian purgatory or give an account for every rotten thing that they ever did. How can that be exceeding joy? We preach Christ, not self, not law, not judgment for sin, but on, on how we built on Christ. That exceeding joy, folks, is entirely vested in the finished work of Jesus Christ. He either died in your place or He didn't. He either presented you faultless before Him or He didn't. That is what His people need to hear. In a very real sense, folks, the Christian walk, the Christian life itself, all of it in a nutshell is... Is, is based on positive reinforcement, not negative, not you must, you must, you must, you have to do this, you've got to do this, and if you don't do this, then something bad's going to happen to you. That's negative reinforcement. We don't even raise our kids that way. Do you honestly think that our Heavenly Father raises us that way? He's given us everything that we could possibly need. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies. Reward is based on how we built on Christ. That alone would be exceeding joy. You know, to meet my Lord who says He loves me with an everlasting love, loves me no matter what I did, would never leave me nor forsake me who said, I will never cease to sustain and uphold thee. What a marvelous fact that our lives are hid with Christ in God. The word exceeding there means wild joy, ecstatic delight, exultation, exhilaration, not some joy based on, oh wow, I can't believe I made it. but that God was faithful and that we will no longer have the ability to sin against our Lord anymore. The one who died in our place and loved us because we were His. It is the brother overtaken in a doctrinal fault that we are to restore in a spirit of meekness. The text is not saying restore these people who crept in unaware. We don't restore, that is, bring back to a previous position or, or practice someone who never held that position in the first place. In fact, we are to avoid them. Okay? In Romans chapter 16, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple, the naive. But then, to be fair, we're also given instructions regarding anyone. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, but we... We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly. The word means 
fruitless, un, unproductive, and not according to the tradition which he received from us. Take note of anyone, anyone who does not obey the instructions that we have given in this letter. Do not associate with him so that he may be what? Ashamed. So it's clear that these ones have to want to be restored. We never force anything on anyone. Kind of reminds me of a joke, you know, I heard a long time ago about, you know, putting people under law to get them under grace. Folks, we can't do that. And then the last verse, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. The only wise God, our deliverer. Our deliverer. Not delivered by our strength, by what we do, by our goodness or our work, but by Christ. And I'm here to tell you folks that He did a perfect work. And I believe any teaching that would diminish that perfect work is non-biblical. The original text says, to the only God, our Savior, by means of Jesus Christ, our Lord be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now, and for all eternity. Amen. Now, both of those texts are a beautiful collection of words. He couldn't deliver you unless He became your kinsman redeemer. Jesus Christ is not less than God. He is God. And so it's a perfect sacrifice. There isn't anything wanting. When you look at these people who have been led astray, the new creation hasn't been led astray. I recognize you're a complex model. You're an old man and a new man. I hope you realize that. I hope you understand that. Many Christians don't. They, they continue to see themselves as single-natured individuals. Folks, we're dual-natured individuals. And we don't clean up the old man. It's easy to follow the old man. That which I believe our text is arguing against don't listen to these ungodly men. Don't listen to false teachers. Listen to Steve. No. No. Listen to the Word of God. Make sure that what you believe is supported by this book, folks, if that is all you ever do in life. I'll be moving on to do a number of topical sermons before a final decision is reached here on where this ministry goes next in teaching verse by verse. As, as far as the coronavirus is concerned, I, I'll leave that to the experts. There's enough information out there on that. I don't believe it'll last long because it was made in China. Until next time, I love you all in Christ. I truly do. Rest in Him. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.